What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Slackers, bringing you guys our next matchup in the Everyone Is Here tournament. So real quick, if you haven't seen it before, simple stuff. We took 100 characters, put them into a tournament, and then each day on the channel, I will upload one of the matches from the tournament. I'll talk about the characters, maybe go over some facts about the character, try to come up with a small potential uh, moveset pool for them, uh, kind of based on how they might potentially work, and uh, then we'll vote down in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's how this whole thing works. We'll go to there's a winner. But um, since I mentioned voting, and voting happens to be part of the rules for this whole thing, I'll throw up the rules on screen for you guys right about now. And we all see the number one rule, and that is a rule because characters are assist trophies, uh, spirits, me costumes, characters that are disconfirmed, you know, characters that won't happen. Uh, it, it's all good. There's no restrictions. There, You know, if... If you happen to, like, keep in mind that this is more, this DLC tournament is more than just the Fighter Pass. This will include characters for the additional DLC. So, look, Sakurai and Nintendo have not come out and stated specifically which kind of characters are off limits. Besides, uh, if they haven't, revol uh, if they didn't start in a video game, well then, you know, they don't count. But besides that, anyone's on the table. So, feel free to drop a vote for anybody you like. That's why rule number one is rule number one. Another rule, though, is voting. How do you vote? Very simple. Down in the comments, you simply type who your vote is for between the two characters for the day. But you do only get one vote. Um, you are allowed to vote for both. Totally fine. Uh, if you like both the characters in the matchup, or if you just can't decide who to vote for, you can just drop a vote for both. No harm, no foul, right? All good. Uh, rest of the rules, double elimination tournament, meaning a character has to lose twice before being officially eliminated. Uh, once we get to the results for each matchup, to determine who wins and loses, uh, if there happens to be a tie, just going to flip a uh, coin on camera. First way to break a tie. And then the last rule is uh, pertains to voting-wise. So, for example, today's Tuesday, meaning we'll get the results of today's matchup next Tuesday. So, <coughs> excuse me, each individual match is only open for voting for just one week. Pretty simple stuff. All right, that's all the rules. So, let's go to the results and the new matchup for the day. All right, so let's go over the results from last week, which was a pretty decent one. Pretty decent one. It was uh, the Battle of the Assist Trophies. We had Isaac, and he was battling Ashley. So the two Assist Trophies going at it. And uh, this one was, I'd say it was relatively close in terms of, I guess, you know, how votes kind of turned out. I think it was, uh, was it, se I think it was seven votes separated the winner from the loser. So still pretty close. Um yeah, I'll just show you. No, no, no story. Where is it at? Here we go. Sorry, it's eight. Eight votes. My bad. Uh, Isaac ended up winning uh, 39 votes to 31 votes for Ashley. So, congrats, Isaac, moving on in the tournament. Gets to face Kratos in the next round. Good luck. Uh, but uh, Ashley, she loses. She's still in the tournament. Just drops to the loser bracket. That's all. She's still in the tournament. Have no fear. If you still like her, she'll be back. She'll be back. Don't worry. But, uh, yeah, there's the results. So we'll drop to the matchup for the day, which is an interesting one. We got a character that we've never had in any of my tournaments. Ezio Adatore from the Assassin's Creed series. And he's taken on Bomberman. Now, one of these characters, aesthetically, just, you know, style-wise, I guess they... Visually, they probably fit a bit better, but I guess we'll talk about that a little bit. So, that's who's up first. Bomberman, yes. He's got the cartoonish Nintendo kind of style of the character that just fits Smash Bros. a bit better. Now, again, that's not necessarily, like, a point in favor for anybody. I mean, we do have realistic characters like Snake, Bayonetta, Cloud, for example. So, it's not like you have to be a cartoonish sort of style character. Anybody's, you know, anybody's up for grabs. Anybody can happen. Now, again, yes, Bomberman's an assist trophy. We all know this by now. But again, remember rule number one. There's no restrictions. If you like a character, you can vote for him. It's all good. No, no harm, no foul. So, Bomberman. I got. I always have to talk about the move set because I always get somebody in the comment section, um, ironically, or just maybe someone's trying to be annoyed. I don't know. Whatever it is, somebody goes, he has no move set. Or if he does, it's just going to be bombs. That's the thing, though. He's Bomberman. That's the thing. What do you what, what what would you expect from Bomberman? Him to pull out a bunch of like swords and daggers and shurikens? No, come on. Have you ever played Bomberman? If you grew up in the '90s, early 2000s, Bomberman was the stuff. All right, this <laughs> I love this guy. I grew up with him, so you could say there's nostalgia factor. Even though like I've still played the newer iterations of his game that have come out over the years, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I've told you guys this before. Bomberman Switch. 
for the uh, Bomberman R or whatever the Bomberman title was that uh, was a launch title with the Nintendo Switch. I played that probably the first month that the Switch was out. I got and I got my Switch at launch. I probably played Bomberman more than I played Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. I'm gonna be honest. I really, I truly love, truly love Bomberman. I love the character. I love everything. He's just, I got, a, I got a big attachment to him. But well, to finish the story, eventually Breath of the Wild overtook it because there was just so much to do, and we get a sequel. Awesome, good stuff. Anyway. Uh, enough about Breath of the Wild. No Legend of Zelda characters in this matchup. So anyway, Bomberman, my point. Let's go to moveset. Yes, it's going to revolve around bombs, but that's the thing. He doesn't just have one bomb that goes kaboom. No, he, there's many multiple to multitude, multiple to, <laughs> there's many multitudes of bombs that you can use. He's got his regular bombs that you would just set out and maybe they'll explode after two, three seconds, whatever that happens to be. Um, he's got timed bombs, he's got, uh, I guess, bombs that are a bit more concentrated, so regular bombs, maybe they just explode, like, left and right, you got maybe other bombs that could, uh, just, ha like, think of it, like, tile-wise, so, like, um, the bomb would explode right where the bomb is placed, and then maybe, like, two tiles to the left and right, and then two tiles up, and then, you know, so it kind of build, like, a big square of an explosive that goes around it. You could have that for interesting bombs. You could have timed bombs. You could have remote bombs. You could have all sorts of different bombs that you could really have a, a, a fun just time with uh, moveset wise. And uh, the characters, like a lot of people will agree, Bomberman's time, it, like he should have been playable at this point. Giving him that assist trophy was really cool to see Bomberman. First of all, it was really cool to see Bomberman and Smash, but then immediately the realization set in that, oh, how did he become an assist trophy? No, we want a playable character. So uh, maybe they get to revisit it. Maybe he does get uh, playable status in the future. Maybe randomly DLC. Not holding my breath on that one. But still, Bomberman is a gaming icon. Bomberman 64 was one of the games to have for Nintendo 64. That was just the thing. Uh, I remember going over to uh, my friend's party. Like, I was in elementary school at the time. I remember going over for birthday parties or sleepovers. Somebody would plug in their N64 and we would be playing Bomberman and or Smash Bros. But that was the thing. Like, that was the thing. Bomberman, such an iconic character. Again, harping back to what Sakura said, the character doesn't just have to be a recognizable character. They have to be fun. And I think an explosive-based moveset, that's something we really, truly don't have. Like, for most of your moves, we don't have something like that. And um, a couple other things for Bomberman. He is allowed to... Uh, maybe he would have... Um, uh, special rights to his bombs. So, like, in his game, there's power-ups that uh, he can kick bombs, he can pick them up and then throw them. So maybe Bomberman would be the only character that could actually pick up a bomb. Like, once he places it, maybe he can run up to it, pick it up, and then throw it again. So that'd be kind of cool. It has a, like, I, I don't, like, uh, just, I, I guess they're projectiles in a way. You know, you set down a bomb, pick it up, and, oh, now I'm going to chuck it at you. So be great for, like, ledge guarding. You could drop bombs on him. You could, there's so many things you could do with just more than just the one bomb you see on screen. There's there's many of them. So, Bomberman, awesome character. One day, I truly do hope this guy gets to be playable in Smash Bros. Let's just have, let's, let's just have, make it happen someday. Please, Nintendo. Konami, please. I think there's a new Bomberman game in the works, I heard. I don't know if that was true or not. I'd have to look that up. But, uh, let's talk about his opponent, though. Whew. Ezio Auditore. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. One character, one series that I've never covered in any of these tournaments. So, Interesting character. Let's talk about the company real quick. Ubisoft. There is zero, zero playable reps from Ubisoft in Smash Bros. Now, we do have a Ubisoft representative with uh, uh, the uh, with Rayman. And while Rayman probably should have been a playable character this time instead of just a spirit. I'm just saying. Like, you got the weird treatment of the, the trophy. And then they're just like, oh, we'll bring him back as a, as a spirit. Like... What? Nah, I should have been playing. Anyway, Ubisoft, no reps. DLC, potentially, maybe is another company that Nintendo... Ubisoft and Nintendo do work pretty decently uh, together. Ubisoft has supported uh, Ninten Nintendo consoles and platforms in the past. They continue to do so to this day. So, I mean, I don't think this is anything out of the ordinary or anything out of the realm of possibility by any means. Like, with all the leakers kind of disconfirming all these fan-favorite characters, it's like, all right... It's going to DLC, and if if we're going to go by the leakers' words again, 
like this this last character could honestly be anybody. It could be a character that's been mentioned in like one breath and then nobody brought it up again. So maybe somebody maybe an Assassin's Creed rep could happen. Maybe. So playstyle wise, let's talk about it. He would be an assassin kind of uh stealth stealthy kind of uh playstyle, which would be kind of cool. So moveset wise. Uh does have access to a sword, so he would have potential sword based moves in his moveset pool. Not just it wouldn't be an entire moveset. It wouldn't be just a sword user, right? He has access to the sword, so Somewhere in the move, maybe slash attack or uh, smash attacks, maybe tilt, something like that could be. But he does have uh, arm blade, uh, arm blades. They're like secret blades. If you've never played Assassin's Creed, um, no, you're not going to be stabbing or impaling anybody. All right, no, it'll just be kind of like a quick swipe, uh, pretty much like the sword attacks, how they do it. Instead of like if you lunge a sword forward, you know, you do a jab. It's not impaling. It's just gonna, you know, the the tip of the blade is just gonna kind of, you know, hit the character and you're gonna get knocked back. Okay. So, if the mature part of the Assassin's Creed moveset is uh, kind of something that makes you go, oh, nope, can't happen, nah, just, they'll dial it back, it, it's that simple, alright? So, Assassin's Creed, but uh, yeah, so he's got potential swords, he's got his arm blades, um, he does have his eagle vision, which I thought would be pretty interesting as well, uh, eagle vision is something where he can kind of see stuff that's coming, and he can kind of like scout and all that sort of stuff, so potentially like, use the eagle vision, I'm gonna get very creative here with this. Use it as a counter. <laughs> Creative, right? No, I'm just like, Eagle Vision, that's like a big part of Assassin's Creed. They've always had that. Maybe not always. But they've had that for many games at least. And I don't know, it's a franchise. It's a character. And speaking of um, Ezio, he's been a guest character in fighting games before. Soul Calibur Five. So, crossing over to a fighting game. I mean, it, it, again, maybe it's not the best point. But like, it's happened before. It could happen again. Maybe. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there, right? So, and look, he's probably the most famous, the most notable, the most recognizable name from the Assassin's Creed franchise, I'd have to say. That's the auditory. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a character that's just like, all right, sure. Assassin's Creed, when it first came out, that was... That was big, and then they started releasing it every single year, and it was like, okay, s stop at this point. So I'm glad they kind of start, you know, I'm glad they started doing, like, every other year or something like that, because when you... My big thing was, like, a lot of it was kind of the same stuff, and I'm not going to get into that too personally, but I, I, I don't like a, a yearly... Uh, yearly entries into a series it just kind of like kills the the vibe for me just like okay whatever it's like the same thing over and over oh we added something this oh he does have a uh like a potential pistol uh you know where you had to like jam it full of uh, uh gunpowder and then you fire it and maybe had a really long reload time something like that maybe could have that for a projectile neutral attack b uh, if you want to so like uh, there's there's some pretty good potential for the moveset for honestly both these characters but for me hands down easy Bomberman gets my vote. Much, much more of an attachment to the character. Again, this tournament, it doesn't matter. No restrictions. Who cares if it's an assist trophy? You like him, you can vote for him. That's what I'm doing. I'm voting Bomberman for this one. So let me know who you guys got down in the comments. Either Ezio or Bomberman or both. Completely fine. Anyway, that is going to be it for this one. So a uh, little sneak peek for tomorrow. Looks like we have, uh, let's see, uh, two Nintendo reps going at it tomorrow. Two potential Echo Fighters. I'll jump into that tomorrow. But we have Medusa from Kid Icarus taking on Ninten from the Earthbound Mother Series. So that's the matchup for tomorrow. And then we'll get the results of... Ooh, this will, oh, this will be a fun one, I think. We'll get the results of Edelgard, Fire Emblem Three Houses. She's taking on Agumon from, well, Digimon. So we'll see how that one plays out tomorrow. But that's tomorrow and today's today. Today's wrapping up. So I hope you guys enjoyed, as always. And hopefully we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody.